Hello! This video will demonstrate how to create an NFS export using cluster data on TAP. This video is based on KB1011476. I'm going to begin by issuing the version command just to show you a little bit about the environment that I'm in. So I'm using data on TAP 8.2. I'm now going to issue the agar show command so you can see what aggregates I have. I need to know what aggregates I have because I'm going to use one to create my NFS export and the volume that goes with it. So I take a look at that and I can also do a vServer show and see what vServers exist so I can be sure that I create something with a different name. So I begin by issuing the command vServer create dash vServer NFS A dash root volume NFSA dash aggregate student one dash NS switch file dash NM dash switch file. Now sometimes the best thing to do is to tab out these commands to make sure you just um, type everything in correctly. Otherwise um, you have to type them in again. And I set the root volume security style to Unix. And as you can see, the job is queued. It takes a moment to create. Now, once again, NFSA is the name of the vServer I'm creating. I'm creating a root volume called NFSA root. And I'm putting this in an aggregate that already existed called student one. Okay. So that was the first thing I did is I created the vServer and the root volume. And the next thing I'm going to do is to create the NFS server. So I go ahead and I type in vServer NFS create dash vServer NFS A dash default dash win dash user and my Windows user is administrator. So once I've done that, I can go ahead and I can create the network interface, also known as a virtual interface. So I do that issuing the command network interface create nfs dash v server dash role data so this is going to be a data interface dash protocols and notice it defaulted when i tapped the sifs and nfs and f cache um, but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to backspace and just put in nfs and my home port and for for this demo is e0c you probably will be using something different, but depends on what system you have. And then my home node, and my node name is a very long name. It's dot eight dash delta dash zero dash zero one, and my address is ten dot two fifty one dot two hundred dot one thirty four, and my net mask is two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five dot zero. And you'll see when that's done, it says my interface was created successfully, but more importantly, the routing group to go with it was automatically created. If you're using an older version of data on tap, you'll have to issue one more command to create that routing group. And that is shown in the KB. But for 8.11 and above, the routing group's automatically created. The next thing I need to do is to create an export policy and a rule to go with that policy. So I'm going to issue the command vServer export policy create nfsa underscore policy dash vServer nfsa. And then after I do that, I create my um, export policy rule. And then uh, my client match is 0 .0 .0 So I'm saying any client on the network and any network. And I'm going to set my read only rule to any and my read write rule to any as well. I'm going to set a non to zero and I'm going to go ahead and set my super user to any. So I'm making a very permissive export. 
and there's nothing wrong with that. And it always depends on what sort of data you're exporting, whether or not you want to modify um, the rules to, to, to narrow down um, what kind of clients can use the export. So then I'm going to do a volume modify command. And the point of this command is to link that policy I created with my volume. So I say volume modify dash v server NFSA dash policy NFSA underscore policy dash volume NFS root dash size 1G dash state online dash user 0 dash group 1 dash security style unix and I say my unix permissions I set that to read write execute for the user read and execute for the group and read and execute for others And then I can set up a comment. I did in this case, I don't need to, but I went ahead and put a comment in. Now, once again, this long command is to link the root volume to the export policy. Okay. And you know, I mentioned it before, it's always good to go ahead and, and tab because if you make a typo, um, the tab won't work. So in this case, I did make a mistake somewhere along the line, a, a, a keystroke. So I had to go all the way back, find it. And what I, f I did is I forgot to put the A in my volume name, NFS, capital A root. So actually tab would not have worked in that case. But I went back and I fixed it. And so now it worked. And now I'm going to create the data volume. And I want you to notice that this link that this will link the volume with a policy and a junction path. So that's what we didn't have before. So my command vol create dash v server nfs a dash volume nfs capital A underscore volume. The aggregate is student one. And the size is 5G, the state is online, and the type is RW for read write, and the policy is NFSA policy. Now I need to make things very small just because for my demo environment I don't have a lot of room. So so this is this is actually going to come back with an error because I'm making it too big. And I thought it might be useful to see that. So I go ahead and I continue with this. So my user is zero, my group is one, my security style is Unix. I put in my Unix permissions. And the most important thing is my, my junction. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. I like to name my junction path the same as my volume. So I'm sticking in my vServer NFSA. And it's going to come back. And turns out I didn't have enough room um, in my in my aggregate. Now that's unusual. So this is something that wouldn't wouldn't show up in a in a regular environment. But for my environment, um, I didn't have five gig of space. So I'm just going to go back. And for the sake of this demo, size is not particularly important. So I'm going to make this really small. And it's a nice example of the fact that our storage systems. Um, are really built for large, large amounts of data, but they can accommodate small amounts as well. So I went ahead and I did that. I changed it to 500 meg, and it's going off and it's creating the volume. And a volume like this can always be increased in size later, so increasing the size of aggregate isn't a problem. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my vServer services command. And I'm going to create a local Unix user. Now it turns out I already have one. And so I wanted to show you the command, but you'll see it doesn't it's not harmful to go ahead and issue the command even though um, it's unnecessary. I'm simply going to get a message that this is a duplicate entry. So I issue the command vserver services 
Unix user create dash v server NFS a dash user and the user's name is root dash ID zero dash primary GID zero and dash full name and I can use the name I want so I put in I'm root user. And I see it's a duplicate entry and that's fine. There's no problems with that whatsoever. And so that is how you create an NFS export. So now that we've created the export, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to a Linux client or some sort of Unix client and just to see if we can mount it. So I'm on a, a Linux client and I begin um, by issuing the command make dir space slash mnt slash nfsa. So that's creating a directory under the mnt directory that I'm going to use as my mount point. And I did it ls so you can see um, that I have created that directory and I issue the mount command and I see that I don't have it mounted. So then I issue the mount command mount 10.251.200.134 that's the interface that I use colon slash nfsa space slash mnt slash nfsa and that does the trick and now I issue mount and I can see that I have this mounted and then I can um, cd2 that directory mnt nfsa I do an ls there's nothing in there because it's a brand new volume and I can create a file so I did so using the touch command touch file one um, I can also create a file using the redirect man space ls will do show me the manual page for ls but in this case it's just going to redirect it into a file called file 2 and I do an ls and I see my files are there so this is working um, perfectly and that's how to create an NFS export and how to mount it to a client thank you for watching this video and I hope this information can be useful to you